Hey all you captains of conditionals, this is Prof G, and in this lesson we'll cover more Boolean logic goodness as we introduce two more ways of evaluating conditions in Swift, the switch case statement, and the ternary operator. Ready to learn? Then let's put on those coding caps. If you're new here, welcome. You might want to check out the course playlist to see how we got here. So at the end of our last lesson, we learned about if statements, and we set our single button to toggle the string for our text view between two values, you are awesome, and you are great. And within the clause of that same statement, we toggled an image string that changed our image from the hand.thumbsup to the sun.max.fill. And while learning about if, we created a playground that we named conditional playground. Now I still have this open in Xcode, so I'm gonna press Command Accent Character to switch to the Playground window, which I've still got up behind this project. If you don't have Conditional Playground open, then find that file and open it up. And I'm gonna clean up some of the stuff that I don't think is really useful for our Conditional Playground notes. I'm gonna delete the three lines where we learned about constants versus variables, and the message string, I am a developer. And then I'm gonna highlight this entire if else clause and the person variable declaration above it. And I'm gonna press command slash to comment it out. And now I'm gonna write a switch case statement that mimics this exact same functionality. And I'll create a constant set to the value Lamore. I could have made this a variable, but I'm not gonna change it. So a constant's fine. That's let person equals the string Lamore. But here's how switch case works. First, we write the switch keyword followed by the value that we're evaluating. Now we wanna look at the data inside of the value person. So we'll write switch person and open close curlies. And then inside the curlies, we add a single case for each condition that we want to respond to. So if I say case and then the string Lemur and always follow a case with a colon, I'm saying in the case where the value person equals the string Lemur and below the colon, I can put any statements that I want to execute if this case is true. And I could write those statements down, but instead I'm going to write all of my cases first, then I'll go back and fill in what to do for each case. So I'll enter case, then the string grace colon, case, then the string Beyonce colon. And when using switch case, instead of using else as a condition, we use default colon. And for some reason, Beyonce got indented, but if I control I on this line, I'll fix the indentation. And switch case is different from if statements because we can write an if statement without an else statement, but switch case statements always have to be exhaustive. So since it's possible for us to put a value in person, which is different from the three cases that we have, Lamour, Grace, and Beyonce, then we need a default case. So default is what we execute if none of the other cases is true. And now let's put in the lines to execute if a given case is true. So underneath Lemore, that's print, hello, Lady Ada. For Grace, that's print, hello, Admiral Hopper. For Beyonce, that's print, all hail Queen B. And for everyone else, the default case is print, hello there, string interp. And in between the parentheses of the string interp, we put the person value. And we can try this out with a shift return on the last line. With person equal Lemore, we get hello, Lady Ada. We change person to Grace, we get hello Admiral Hopper, and just to test the default case, set person to Prof G, and we get hello there Prof G. Nice. Now note that switch case evaluates all cases starting from the top, and as soon as a single case is satisfied, I'll skip any remaining cases and continue to execute code beyond the statement. Now there's a lot more we could do with switch case statements, and these statements are especially useful when we combine them with enums, but we'll be learning about those in a later lesson. For now, I do want to show you a couple more things with switch case. First, we don't have to pass back some sort of equality with a case statement. A case can also include some logic to evaluate. So in this example, we're evaluating a playing card type, we haven't learned all the logic that you're seeing in here yet. We'll get to it soon. But essentially, we take a look to see if the card type is a J, Q, K, or A for Jack, Queen, King, or Ace. If it is, we pass back a value for that. But if we don't have any of those values, then down here what we do is we check to see if we have a number. If we do, we use the number as the value for the card. Otherwise, we print out a statement that says invalid card type. Now on the right, I mentioned that if we have multiple cases with the same result, we can actually put those cases on the same line separated by commas. And that's what I'm showing in this slide. This is a slightly different example. So in some card games, all the face cards might equal 10. So here J, Q, and K are all 10. So we just separate them by comma. If any of these patterns are matched, we pass back a 10. Now, another thing we can do in Swift is we can check to see if the pattern matches a range of values. We haven't done a whole lot with numbers yet, but here by checking to see if the grade is within a range 90 dot dot dot, we're essentially saying 90 and anything above 90 to infinity. You could also write this the other way. So if we had triple dot up to a value, we'd go from negative infinity up to that value. Now, 80 dot 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 90 means any value between 80 and 90. 70 with two dots and a less than symbol means anything between 70 and up to, but not including the number 80. And I deliberately wrote something 
poorly here. The value 90 would actually be true in the first case and in the second case. So it would be true in the first case because we go from 90 up to infinity, but in the second case, we go from 80 dot 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 through 90. Now, since the first case is always evaluated before the second case, if we have a 90, it would always be an A, even though the second case could be true, we'd never reach that second case if we had a value of 90. The switch statement is part of the Swift language, and there's a Swift language reference at swift.org. And if you want, you can explore these statements and find out all sorts of examples and additional information. I try not to overload you with every possible condition right away. We'll focus on the most relevant ones. This way, we'll continue to build our apps without fire hosing you with information that you might not use for a while. But if you ever want to dive in and learn more, or you want to explore things before we cover them in our lessons, know there's a ton of documentation online, and it's all free. So now back in our playground, let's comment out the switch case statement and the person variable above so we can learn the ternary operator. Now the ternary operator is a single statement that lets us represent an if else condition. Its main advantage is that it lets us do this on a single line of code. So to demonstrate this, let me first show you a simple if else condition. First we'll say let person equals lemur, then the if statement will be if person equals a string lemur, open and close curlies, print hello lady Ada, else and in between curlies here, print hello there. And you can test this out. If person equals Lemur, we get hello, Lady Ada. If person is Prof G, we get hello there. Now, this if else statement has three parts. The if statement evaluates true or false. It's a Boolean. The first set of curlies is what you do if it's true. The second set of curlies is what you do if it's false. Well, the ternary operator here has the same three parts. First, you write a Boolean statement. It must return either true or false. Then there's a question mark followed by what to return if the Boolean statement is true. Then there's a colon followed by what to return if the Boolean statement is false. So in this line, we're creating a constant name result, and it contains the result of the ternary operator, which is inside the parentheses. So between the parentheses, that's the whole ternary operator. First, we check to see if person equals equals Lemur. We don't write if, we just put person equals equals Lemur, then the question mark, and if it's true, we return the string hello lady Ada then the colon and if it's false we return the string hello there and we wrote these things on two lines here just to make it easier to see the ternary operator statement again the stuff between the parentheses bool question mark do this if it's true colon do this if it's false and whatever we get whether it's the string after the question mark or the string after the colon we put that in the result value and then the line below just prints the result value but we could absolutely write this all on one line and that's what we've done here we'll print the result of this, first evaluating if the person equals Lemur, which is either true or false. And it's the same as this line in the if statement up here, which evaluates true or false. If it's true, we send back what's after the question mark, which is hello, Lady Ada. Just like what we've got in the curlies after the if statement. And if it's false, we send back what's after the colon, which is hello there, just like the else clause in this if statement. But with the ternary operator, it's all on one line, and we use one print statement, not two print statements. It looks weird, but if you remember, boolean, which is true or false, question mark, what to return if it's true, colon, what to return if it's false, then you've got it down cold. So let's write this entire five line if statement as a one line print statement that uses the ternary operator. So we'll write our print statement, and in between parentheses is our entire ternary operator. It's got three parts. The first part returns true or false, person equals equals the string Lemur. Then question mark, this is what we return if it's true. I'm just going to copy the string hello lady Ada up here, paste it after the question mark, then colon, and I'm going to copy the string hello there, paste that after the colon, and we're done. I'm going to comment out these five lines of if-then code, and let's try this out with Prof G. We see we get hello there. Let's try this out with person equals Lemur. We get hello, Lady Ada. Perfect. Ternary operator understood. Now, the ternary operator is more difficult to read, and most of the time it's better to write more code if it makes your code easier to read and understand. But since the ternary operator is so commonly used, and we'll especially see this with Swift UI, this is a tougher-to-read function that you should really know cold. And so to make sure you've got the ternary operator down, let's have a ternary operator challenge. Comment out the if else statement inside of your project's button action, and you're going to provide the same logic, but you're going to use ternary operators. So replace this functionality with two lines of code, each using the ternary operator. One will toggle the message string between, you are awesome and you are great, and the second line should toggle the image string between, sun.max.fill and hand.thumbsup. You can do it. Pause. And it's okay if you need to rewind and take a look at the syntax for the ternary operator. But when you're ready, resume, and let's compare answers. 
And all right, Swifter, let's head over to Xcode. I'll highlight these seven lines in the if statement and command slash to comment them out. And what we want to do here is we want to set the message string equal to one of two conditions. So we'll start with message equals, and we'll set message equal to the outcome of the ternary operator. And I'll put this inside parentheses just so it's a little easier to read. You don't need the parens. And then we evaluate what to put in the message string by using the ternary operator. So I'll put in parentheses here. And remember, the first thing that we're going to do is put in a Boolean condition that's going to give us either a true or false. False. That's this bit up here, message string equals equals message one. I'll copy it, paste that between the parens. This is going to give me true or false. Then I put in a question mark, and if it's true, I want to return message two just like I did in the positive if condition up top. Otherwise, colon, I'm going to return message one just like I did in the else clause up top. That's it. Let's give it a shot. Show message. You are awesome. You are great. You are awesome. You are great. You are awesome. You are great. No surprise. Of course you are because you have mastered the ternary operator. Now, if you didn't get this for either the message string or the image string, why don't you pause here now that you've seen the message string and see if you can get it for the image string. But for everybody who wants to see the solution right now, below this we'll say image string equals and up top we compared to see if message string equaled message one. Now we could use that Boolean comparison up here, or we could use the image string in here. I'll just show you how the image string would work, but either one produces the same logic. So in parens I'll say image string double equal sign image string one question mark. And if that's true, we want it to be image string two colon. Otherwise, if it's false, we want it to be image string one. And now let's try this out by clicking on press me and look at that. We're toggling between the you are awesome, you are great, and the two images we wanted. Hopefully you now understand the ternary operator and the switch case statement. More big learning unlocked. Keep at it, Swifter. There's more goodness to come.